Bro, the fact that a guy had a testicle hanging next to a kid is like, what What are we doing here? We're playing tetherball? Go flex your testicle with your gay friend, bro. By which means and who has the authority and power over you to tell you, oh, you have to put your before and after to Why? Then I started fasting, bro. Now I'm only sleeping three, four, five hours. Why the Big Bang Theory is mathematically impossible. What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another podcast. Today, we got the boy, Nate Belmar. It's good to be back. Back for part two. Back for part two, but not Spain, Miami. Correct, correct. Miami edition, as we can see on the back skyline here on the TV. Very we're nice. going to go over a lot of topics today regarding health, fitness, esoteric beliefs, and going down the rabbit hole in certain conversations. But for anybody somehow that doesn't know who you are, Nate, do a quick intro of what you're working on right now and everything yeah. about that. So a little bit about me. My name is Mr. Belmar or Nate Belmar. I'm just a traveler that has a very cool ecosystem for other travelers that want to get basically shredded and level up. Of course, we all do this in a holistic manner. Like I'm not about uh, bastardizing the body in order to achieve a certain aesthetic look. Like pinning With steroids tests. and all that kind of stuff, 100%. One of the first things I wanted to jump into mm -hmm. was some hot topic okay. a few months ago, eight weeks ago, give or take. The expose of, oh, Nate was never fat, Nate was oh. never unhealthy. So I don't even want to jump into all the nitty gritty details of that yeah. because you've already proven before online, yeah. you've had before and after videos. Yeah. What I want to jump into is what inspired you and motivated you to go from that current state or old state of yourself to now being where you're at fit, traveling with six pack abs and being in shape. Okay, so first of all, let's address the material vessel, having a six pack, having eight pack, breaking necks, pretty cool it's dope but it's not going to fulfill you like we have to be straight up with people like candid right like you getting six packs not gonna uh change certain problems now you're going to live optimally and you're going to become a better version of yourself in your baseline in terms of your health and wellness is going to be amplified so it's a good pursuit the issue is why you're pursuing it it's honestly everything in hindsight kind of makes sense but it was definitely a journey it was definitely tough but it was the point where it was already, it, it was, this was already past the point of like, okay, am I going to take my life or not? Am I going to like those, and the reason I didn't post before and after, and I've mentioned it multiple times is because every time I do see this stuff, it just like reminds me of those times. So even I never wanted to post my before. It's like, that's the truth. And the truth is I had to post it because it was getting out of control in terms of like, people were deeming me like, bro, you're never at, and I'm like, what is going on, dude? So, uh, Victor, uh, CEO of Anime Shreds, he's like, Nate, yeah, just, just post the befores. And the truth is, it's kind of funny because I, I, I've got, I got even more out of shape and I have even more, uh, but I just don't want to get into that. But the funny part is all the people that attended the first Capital Club event in Tulum, like it was probably 20, 30 guys. They all saw me and I was out of shape. Like I was in the best shape. And then I went into all my downfall after that. Okay. So people saw the baseline and the baseline wasn't that best. So like, all you have to do is just look at images, photos. And the truth is like, <laughs> people just hop on whatever the trend is or the topic is. So if people are talking about my befores and after, good. Like, I mean, you probably have better things to do. But the truth is you can't also hide. The truth has to be revealed. So you kind of have to expose it. And first I started with the community. I'm like, hey guys, I know like a lot of things are going online. I just want to say like, I don't want to post my before and after, but I will. And it has nothing to do with me showing vulnerability with having a bad physique because I, I openly talked about it. By which means and who has the authority and power over you to tell you, oh, you have to put your before and after to, why? Like if I want to, it's because I want to. And I, I was kind of forced to do it and I did it and it's fine. But the truth is I was happy to do it because there were a lot of people that did believe that he's like, okay, he went through all this. It wasn't all made up or whatever. He went through all this journey. Uh, I can do it too. So for the people that did believe, thank you. I appreciate it. You're awesome. And for the people that didn't believe, it's okay. You're just a bot that follows the crowd. Uh, <laughs> that's the truth. And honestly, it's just ironic. I look at the whole, it's basically like a comedy show. That being said, for what was the, the turning point? I remember I was actually in Puerto Rico. This was after... This was after the whole episode. This was after me meeting up with Luke after the whole episode months later. We met up in Brazil. Then we went to Croatia together. And by then, I wasn't super duper fat or out of shape, but I wasn't healthy. And I had love handles and everything. And I remember he's like, yo, you, you want to come to Puerto Rico? I've got an extra house. You can stay and hang out. And I was like living in Florida, traveling around, having a good time. But like, you know what? I'm going to like lock in, get in there. And, and I remember I was at the pool, bro. And I was just like, 
having another train of thought that was negative that reminded me of the year I completely lost before, which was like year of like waking up at 3 p.m., 4 p.m., like not when, not going like not turning on the light, getting on the shower all like dark. It's just a very negative environment, right? And when you catch that, I'm like, bro, I literally took me a couple months just to reach base level noob, not even like suicidal, like noob, right? So I'm like, I need to go full mode. And I'm like, I know all the stuff I need to do. Like one thing is to know it, understand it, and other things to go full throttle. So I remember I was in the pool, like looking in the water, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like full, I, I call it like dojo, but I'm like, I'm gonna go all in, bro. Like I'm doing it. And I did it, bro. It was like four or 5 a.m., wake up, boom, 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 energy. But the why was so strong yeah. that, and that's why I tell people, start with your why, start with your why, start with your why. Like, what is your why? It's not cheesy because why is, is, is what's going to kindle that fire when discipline's not there. Very true. And most people lack discipline. Correct. So get a good why mm -hmm. to at least mitigate that. Mm -hmm. I think the stronger the pain, the less you have to be disciplined because the mm. pain is going to force you to change. Because if, if you wake up every morning, or in this case, every afternoon, mm. and you're in so much pain, you just hate your After, life. Afternoon on a good day, sometimes like 3 or 4 p.m. Or like, <laughs> but I'm, 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 not, I'm not lying. Sometimes it got so bad where you do like multi-day sleeps where you almost go crazy. If you're in a dark room and everything, because you, you don't understand day from night or night from day, it becomes like an insomnia of just pure darkness, right? So if you don't get out of that, bro, like it's only going to amplify over long periods of time. Mm -hmm. And that's a realization I had. Like, I have so much pain, so much inflammation. I walk and I, I feel so much pain. Like me doing this was impossible, right? I was like, it hurts now. By the time I'm in my late 30s, in my 40s, in my 50s, it's only going to be amplified. And only my thoughts are going to get more and more and more and more ingrained. It's only going to get worse. So it's like, A, take my life now. B, coast and be a total noob. It's going to get progressively worse and then like take action. Or dude, snap out of it and get back, get back to it. Yeah. And it was like, no, bro, this sucks, this sucks. And a whole year went by. And I was like, shit, a whole year went by. A whole year of just doing the same thing over and over and over again of like waking up super late, not being motivated, right? And the issue is it's that's downward momentum. And the, to break out of downward momentum is so hard than breaking from a plateau or a flat line or you living normal. Like baseline is so low that you have to, you, there has to be a shift, bro. You, you have to be like, enough is enough. Like, and it doesn't mean you won't fall, you won't fail, but it means that you're sick of it and you want to change. And I tell people like, go dojo mode, like go full throttle. That doesn't mean like obsessed with fitness. Like I'll tell you certain protocols that you can do that are beneficial, but like go for it. Why? Because when you decide to coast, your baseline is so much higher that you can afford to coast mm -hmm. for a while. If you're here, you, you can't afford a coast, especially if you haven't built the, the metabolic uh, machinery, like the skeletal muscle at an old age, like functional movements, basic strength, leg strength, back strength, a lot of functions that you can build in your 20s and 30s that by the time you're 40, 50, you only have to maintain, mm -hmm. right? But look at your grandparents, look at your parents, look at, like, where are they at, right? And to, not only in terms of their genetics, but epigenetics, like what's their surrounding, right? Because you have a pretty decent blueprint as to what your life is going to look like. And I totally ranted there, but that's, that's, that was just my train of thought on that. No, that was good. I don't think you've talked about it online. And I, the, issue, the issues I don't like doing podcasts. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not, yeah. So very. that's why I wanted to start with that because it's something that many people, including myself, have thought about. Mm. I'm like, I wonder what that piece was to really get them out of that rut to get where you're at right now. Yeah. There was a period of time where things were shaking in terms of belief systems and everything. But when you actually become comfortable with being uncomfortable, you can actually sit there in the silence by yourself. You either level up or live in delusion or like lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. But once a paradigm is shifted, like that's why either people go crazy or people, and that was the paradigm with fitness. There's multiple paradigms that can be shifted. Mm -hmm. Fitness is just one aspect. What was the paradigm for you that shifted for fitness? So many things like not being dependent on carbohydrates as the main source of energy, cycling carbohydrates, uh, understanding that you can go through long periods of fasting and autophagy, uh, learning that it's all about understanding what's intuitive and good for you, right? Like I could get, like I got, I told everybody, I launched Anime Shreds in May. I haven't worked out since. You know, I'm always like split testing everything. I, that doesn't mean I was lazy. I've been like walking, fasting, stretching. But I'd, I'd put so much mass, so much stress, so much fat on the body that I needed a break. I was like full bear mode in the mountains, like training, weights and everything. I got almost to 220 pounds, was heavy, but I was sleeping 12 hours, 13, I was like tired. But that's what I needed for the goal, which was the bulk. And I, then I started fasting, bro. Light, now I'm only sleeping three, four, five hours, feeling good, sometimes a little bit tired. Holy sometimes, shit. Yeah, dude, so I'm, but I'm also, if I was putting that stress, right, on the body with hypertrophy training, 
with all this and that, I would have to eat more. I'd be more tired. So I'd have to do more. So it's all like, and it's all about testing. Yeah. My test was how much muscle can I maintain because I'm metabolically flexible, because I know how to fast, because I know how to create movement, because I know how to do calorie deficit and not have to work out mm -hmm. and prompt my body to tap into fat as the energy I need to work throughout the day. How do I know I'm tapping into fat? Because I'm ecstatic. I'm like working there, buzz, because my brain's off, or operating off of ketones. If it wasn't, I'd be like, where's food? Give me the sugar. Yeah. This is so different from any other guys in the fitness space, right? Everyone's like, bro, get as big as you can. Fucking curl some yeah. thick ass Latinas on a, on a bench press or bench some hot girls or some shit like it's, Bradley it's, Martin. Yeah, it's the gym bro mentality, yeah. looking super bulked and big. Yeah. And your identity of macho being uh, attached to uh, a silhouette or an aesthetic. I think it's cool. I think skeletal muscle is, is an intrinsic tool that people need to adopt. And I feel like a gym bro is more convenient than somebody who's lazy and sedentary and all this and that. Is it fully optimized? No, but it's definitely a step up. So people that go to the gym, work out, even if it's not for the best reasons, like still my hat's off to them because they're at least doing something. For sure. But I don't feel like it's still the most optimal in a lot of ways. And stretching is one facet. Is, and the beauty of stretching is once you reduce inflammation, you can actually stretch easier and it doesn't hurt as much. You're actually more limber. When you move more, when you shift positions, when you squat, when you stand up, when you hang, when you stretch, you used to decompress you naturally. Like I don't stretch that much now, right? Because you, people think, Metabolic flexibility, maintain muscle, yeah, but flexibility, it's a lot easier to maintain flexibility once you've reached there and you live a certain life and you're not stretching all the time, you're still flexible. Right now, if you start working out, you can add density, volume, you can like, and that's epic, right? That's cool and there's a beauty and alchemy to transforming your body. I don't think it should become your God and you should worship it and you should pursue it and pursue the pump. And pers like, pursue the pump. Pursue the pump, that's guys. Funny. Pursue the pump, like it's the thing, bro. Like you enjoy it, you get your, yeah, like, that was funny. All I'm trying to say is don't become addicted to, yeah, to like being obsessed with like bulking. Like it's good to bulk, but if you can't scratch your back or pop a pimple in your back or squat down at 60 to pick up your grandchild, like is that really, is that really like conducive to health and fitness or is that just pursuing a big body composition? Yeah, Ronnie Coleman's pissed right now. But truth be told, I don't even know if it was hit all of that training. I think it was more of a like a surgery and a mistake and a pinch that fucked it up. Mm. That's just my humble opinion. And I'm saying it from personal experience, from malpractice. I've seen people, bro, little pinch, all their leg goes completely limp. So I feel like there was a tweak there that kind of ruined it. Of course, that training is not conducive over long periods of time, especially in your 40s and 50s, and especially if you have a highly inflammatory diet. I started working out like a couple days ago. I'll do like a full body workout. Then I'll rest a couple of days, do another full body workout. And I've done a few recomp, but I went a couple months in it and, it and I needed it, bro. And I felt it. And now I'm like feeling good, bro. And I'm introducing carbohydrates and I'm doing it in a way where it's targeted for the clean bulk. And the clean bulk is only possible, in my opinion, if you become metabolically flexible, because all you have to do is withdraw caloric surplus, but your body's still tapping into fat. So when it no longer has a substrate of energy that you've inputted, it taps into the energy that's conveniently placed around your waist, like a bipedal creature, which is fat. Mm. The problem is most people can't tap into that because they're always eating carbs. So the brain is dependent on carbs. Then you don't give it carbs, it starts freaking out. You start tapping into glycogen, which is basically the glucose stored in your muscle. Mm. And that's why people say, oh, self cannibalize, eat three times a day. Because you're not metabolically flexible, <laughs> dog. Dude, the last time we filmed last year, you, I remember you said it was July, middle of July mm. when we filmed. And you were like, bro, I haven't lifted since February. Yeah. And I was like, holy fuck. But I've never heard of that before. Because people can't do that, bro. People can't take time off the... That's what I mean. It's yeah. different. Like, I don't it, know many other people that can do that. But I was also walking tons, stretching. I wasn't, like, living sedentary as well. What is your average, you think, daily walking steps? I don't count my steps or anything. No? Dude, I'm, like, anti-numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you just be out here. Like, no living. aura ring. Nah, bro. It's just, like... Yeah, dude. Aura ring's kind of gay. <laughs> <laughs> I know my guys out here watching quantums, <laughs> quantum number. <laughs> Some of our friends. Well, the, the, issue, the, issue, the issue is, and we were talking, I discussed this with Sean today, is becoming obsessed with numbers, right? Like yeah. you feel like you got good rest, but then checking in your aura ring says you didn't. So you get the placebo effect. No, I didn't get Susan. I mean, you start, yo, you can go that, that rabbit hole real quick. Yeah. So that's my whole thing. Like, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I just don't want, like EMF radiating, like you know what I'm saying. Like it's just too much going you on. You even got up and put your phone up there. So and I'm also, also, also wearing EMF 
boxers. That's the thing? Yeah, dude. Silver lining, 100%. The fitness industry is completely botted. Like, 100% botted. Think about it. Break it down. I'll break it down. You go to a gym at the same time that most people go to a gym after your job. So it's clustered with people. Tons of energy in there. But that's not the issue. The issue is you're under fluorescent lights, Bluetooth. You're radiating AirPod. You have everybody blinging with their their phones pinging like just you're staring at yourself in the mirror you have tons of chicks that are there and you're either lifting for them or eagle lifting with another guy like it's, it's just like the whole environment is just like uh right so that's why you start seeing people that start they start doing their private gyms they start doing their so my whole take like if i had to tell somebody hey you're completely new be like get in tune with your body train with your body train with bands at home, feel comfortable. And once you have a decent foundation, two, three months, you understand, then go to the gym when you're more confident. If you're in there and you're not confident, you know what you're doing, you see somebody lifting and you want to ego lift, bro, people can go down that rabbit hole real quick. So that's why I'm saying bought it. And that's just one facet. There's so many, bro. People don't like, look, no, bro, my chest is not big enough. I, I can't stretch. I need to go do chest. Okay. The problem is, first of all, you don't understand how to train, how to put yourself in a certain state, how to train till failure, how to recoup and alkalinize the body so then you don't feel as much hurt because you're in an acidic state. There's so many things that can be productive that when you do train chest, you maximize it. One of the biggest epiphanies I had was the shredder gourd, bro. The what? The shredder gourd, like the gourd. So in Argentina, they have a gourd. Uh, basically, it's cop I believe it's from Turkey originally, but it's a gourd. And it has a pipe, and you'll see all the, all, all the Argentine uh, people and Paraguayans and Uruguayans drink out of it, right? And it's basically a gourd with a pipe, and there's a straw, and it filters the straw. But they drink mate, right? And mate is a very typical drink. The issue with mate is, first of all, it's how they make mate. Most of it's smoked. Then it's all the fillers and all that, and it's super toxic. It's terrible. Now, there's great mate, but like everything, there's good and there's bad. Of course. So my epiphany was, I was looking at the gourd, I'm like, Dude, why would I drink nanoplastic teas, right? They're absolutely destroying you. Why don't I just adopt like the loose leaf property of the teas, r roots, herbs, and start studying all the properties of all of them and start like making my own potion. That's what I got, that's where I got into it. But it's all sandbox, it's all like curiosity, but you can't do that if you're like, oh, what does everybody say? Like, <laughs> no, dude. I actually was gonna cover that at one point. I was, yeah. I wanted to ask you like, how did you come up with this branding idea of potions, making your I mean, own it's potions? It's not branding, it's literally potions. Like what is a potion? It's like concoction of things and like, and there's different potions. Like you have the, the, the potions in terms of cold potions, potions in terms of like tinctures and alcohol, like combining ACV. Like for example, my apple cider vinegar, dude, it's not apple cider vinegar, it's apple cider vinegar. There's tons of herbs in there collecting for nine months, eight months, and it just looks like a gnarly potion. And basically what I'm doing is through tinctures, it has, a, it has some alcohol that extracts all the properties. So potions can manifest themselves in, in a plethora of ways. I just look at potion as like an alchemical process of combining different things intentionally for a specific design, whether it's like, am I trying to sleep? Am I trying to relax? Am mm -hmm. I trying to be hyper-focused, right? And you start learning different things and then put it together. Like, I remember I've done so many bad ones where like you put too much lavender and it overpowers and you're like bitter or you put devil's claw which is fantastic, but you put that just a little bit into any potion and it tastes so strong and so hard. So it's just things you go learning along the way. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea was like, how can I extrapolate in a fasted state? Cause you might be getting some, like, how can I absorb everything from, like everybody should be drinking nettle leaf in my opinion, organic nettle leaf, high levels of silica, which everybody needs, high levels of magnesium, calcium, super inexpensive. Stuff, yeah. yeah, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna be in a fasted state and I'm gonna absorb all of this. And that's where it all started, bro. And the sandbox is like oh, learning about this and learning about that. And yeah. We talked about a few things earlier off camera and I want to bring them up to everybody to listen today in terms of how the body is, mm. how we function. Mm. And how do you think we got to where we are in 2024 as human beings? That's a great question. First of all, what does the common crowd think? Most of them are botted, perfect. We've already addressed that with fitness. Perhaps it's the same way in this vertical of life, right? If you really start studying the body, if you really start studying its true nature in terms of not just being one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, you start realizing the harmonization between like your teeth and your health and, your, and you start really understanding how the body works the more you realize that there is an intentional design behind it. Like, 
the more I study, the more I realize I'm like, okay, wow, the human body is fascinating. Like there has to be, there has to be like an intentional designer behind it because of how inexplicably hard it would be if one thing faltered, how everything would falter. And yeah, you just start looking and it's, I'm just like, it boggles my mind, dude. Like I, the more I study and the more you start studying genetics, epigenetics, you start understanding that there's a plethora of realms, spiritual realm, there's more that meets the eye. You look, look good at looking at the body for something else, not like just material. The issue is most people would never tap into that because they don't even sit, every, everybody's like, what do they do? Wake up in the morning, go study, go drink Mountain Dew, play Call of Duty with the boys. Then maybe if they're good, they'll go do their gym bro session at the gym. And they live in this very small matrix or system. So intrinsically, yes, you look at the human design and anybody who has half a brain cell can look up on YouTube why the Big Bang Theory is mathematically impossible. Just start there. Go down that rabbit hole and you just realize, okay, there's intentional design. And when you understand intentional design and you're grateful for it, it's a lot easier to make something with, with that raw material that you're given. Now, truth be told is, people have been warned, people know that when you become older, they are gonna incur what I call, or what is called the law of entropy, degradation, right? Everything. And the older you get, the more you're gonna feel it. So do as much as you possibly can with the power of youth to optimize your body so by the time you're older, you're at least enjoying life a little bit better or in a better experience as to what it could be. Because you have the age, so make sure that you take mm -hmm. advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, tapping, in, <coughs> tapping into this a layer deeper, mm -hmm. do you believe there's a higher power? Mm -hmm. Okay, walk us through that. You don't need a... I can't walk you through it. You have to walk yourself and discover it and look for it. I believe there's a higher power in, in, in many ways in my own life. Like I can, off camera, I can tell you multiple stories, bro, of people call, call it supernatural, but it's not really supernatural. Like supernatural doesn't, those are not words that justify what occurred. What, what occurred was a, maybe a paranormal activity or something that was out of the norm that kind of, maybe shattered your lenses or gave you perspective as to potentially there being more to the world that meets the eye. Mm -hmm. And if you understand that and then you realize the intricacies of the world and how everything is so hinged and intertwined and interconnected and how everything is harmonious and balanced. Bro, just go to the Grand Canyon, go somewhere and look there and be like, okay, like how is this made, bro? Like, I, I generally believe there is a higher power. Mm -hmm. um, not believing in one is A, you're either trying to cope with reality, B, you're delusional, or you've been fed like just a bunch of propaganda, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I do believe we are going to move from uh, the ironies of life, the pendulum swing. Mm -hmm. We are going to move from a generation of people that are not atheists into a different kind of generation. I'm mm -hmm. not going to say what now, but we're going to move from atheism real quick, real quick in the next couple of years. Mark my words. <laughs>